So this is actually um, a redux of uh, a presentation series I've been giving over the last, <laughs> it's awesome, uh, over the last uh, year or so. Uh, and I uh, added actually uh, a, a whole new series of content that um, while we are going to talk about both the present and past of cloud, we're also going to look a little bit to the, uh, to the future. Uh, so that being that being the case, I thought it would be interesting to talk about um, some of the things that uh, I see are, are more interesting than the current set of discussions regarding cloud, which uh, short of arguments on Twitter are starting to really bore me, um, only because they're very, very repetitive, uh, and I don't think focused on things that really matter. So to that point, um, this was something I gave at the uh, Cloud Security Alliance. Uh, in this country, I, I, I'm glad I don't have to explain what a magic eight ball is, but I've been on four continents in the last four weeks, and only three of them knew what a magic eight ball was. So like trying to act out what a magic eight ball was to a bunch of Korean people was very interesting. They're like, what? So, um, so you know, we get a bunch of questions all the time, like, is cloud really a major shift in IT? And I think ultimately, depending upon your, your perspective, it is certainly a very interesting and notable next step. Um, is it revolutionary? Is it evolutionary? Uh, probably a little bit of both, depending upon your perspective. We're going to explore some of that. Um, you know, will everything move to the cloud? Is generally a set of questions that gets asked. Um, there's uh, there's a bunch of folks that talk about the ultimate destination of cloud computing, as though it it, it everything we've done in IT will simply in the next two years or so end in cloud, like it just punctuates, boom, stop, that's all, we don't go any further. Um, but the fact that, you know, the question is asked, will everything move to cloud? I think most people who have any experience with uh, or are at all um, subject to things like compliance, uh, issues relating to um, IP, will realize that companies will still be, in, in some cases, very risk of, uh, risk averse in terms of moving certain things to, to public-based cloud computing. That doesn't, however, mean that we won't end up with uh, hybrid models where when you talk about the definition of cloud, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, as, as the presentation goes on, uh, your definition of cloud matters very, uh, very much when you talk about uh, will everything move to cloud? Will everything move to public cloud computing, uh, mass market, low-cost utility providers like Amazon? Uh, I think my answer is, is, is that's mine, very doubtful. I'll be interested in yours uh, at the end of the presentation. You know, is uh, the next question that gets asked is, is all we know and do today, uh, especially in security, worthless in cloud? Um, I'd say absolutely not. 99% uh, of the things that we do, right or wrong, are still applicable, um, especially in the early days of cloud, uh, and uh, in many cases very useful, although we sit and uh, and iterate an awful lot on what uh, we should and shouldn't do. And uh, there are a lot of discussions calling for the, the uh, uh, need for whole new security models, you know, a complete change in, uh, in how we view security, uh, which if you um, kind of look at cloud as a, as a next step platform change, certainly there are differences operationally, culturally, and some technically. But does it mean we toss everything away? No, I don't think so. Uh, is the cloud more secure? Uh, the reply is hazy, try again. I think it actually without context, it's a really stupid question. More secure than what? And this is part of the problem we get into when we start comparing, um, for example, things that are uh, hosted, uh, services that are provided outside uh, to you versus let's say something that you manage uh, internally yourself. Uh, we've had a lot of practice where uh, we're told and sold that a lot of managed services are simply more secure because the provider's entire business is so focused on delivering secure services that if it wasn't secure, you would never use them. Well, if that was axiom was, were to actually hold true, 99% uh, of the companies on the planet would probably be out of business right now because we all um, have seen issues associated with l providers large and small that make the notion that uh, simply because it's your, your core business, you're going to do a better job than somebody else. And we're going to discuss what that means and why and why I think it's relevant. But without context, it's kind of a stupid question. It's hard to compare apples to, uh, to, to elephants. So can we trust the cloud? This is the $64,000 question. Um, and again, uh, we're going to kind of run through some models as to what that means. But the, the issue is, do you have options today? And from a security perspective, the answer is uh, yes, definitely. Uh, and we're going to talk about what that means. So before I get into the sections about talking about where the present and past of, of uh, computing has led us to cloud, uh, let's talk about the future. So the future, I think, of cloud is actually these things. It's uh, also these things, netbooks. 
It's uh, also these things, thinner and thinner clients. That could be on thicker and thicker platforms, but thinner and thinner clients. And then, of course, uh, these things. Um, and what's interesting about uh, the notion of mobility <laughs> and uh, is that there are, by rough count, according to uh, the font of all knowledge Wikipedia, there are roughly 7 billion mobile platforms on the planet. Not all of them smart, not all of them used by smart people either, but 7 billion mobile platforms, uh, but only 4 billion people, which is kind of a weird ratio when you think about it. Um, or did I get that backwards? I think I got that backwards. Yeah. No, 4 billion mobile platforms, 6 billion, 7 billion people, uh, which is still staggering, right? That means almost every person on the planet, there's enough phones for every, every person on the planet, um, and probably will be more as these platforms, as they develop, like netbooks, like my kids over there playing with the iPod, not listening to me, or iPad, um, uh, will attest to. So what's interesting about cloud, and we're going to talk about this as the main body of the, of the talk, is that um, cloud computing is actually taking the notion of many, many distributed data centers that you could spread, providers would spread resources out, and they're consolidating them back down into mega data centers. So this is one of the biggest ones on the planet. This is Microsoft's new Chicago data center. Enormous, right? Hundreds of thousands of nodes serving perpetually or uh, potentially millions of customers. So while mega data centers kind of re-centralize the apps and data into these mega data centers, uh, these mobile platforms actually redistribute the same apps and data uh, into uh, your little mobile uh, data centers, which would be your pocket. Um, and so what's interesting about that to me is that, uh, is that when, it, when we talk about cloud computing and what it means, it's very vendor focused today for the most part. It's like how vendors are adapting their models to serve you. But the demand is, is, is really interesting because the consumption modality is, to me is going to be much more important than what will ultimately be a commodity set of services on the backside. All the providers will look to kind of offer you the same sets of services with some disruption every now and then to differentiate. But what's interesting is the fact that um, how you consume and end up uh, using that data is important. So how will you choose to protect and where and with what, um, and how you invest in how you're going to protect this data, ultimately, if we have these two different models. So the eight things, interestingly enough, and I'm going very quickly because I'm going to talk about them in more depth, that really start to matter again with cloud computing uh, are op uh, open standards and APIs. This is a recurring theme every time we have disruptive innovation. The timing of when standards arise um, becomes, a, you know, a, an arguing point about the fact that, you know, standards um, spur in a, or uh, uh, standards uh, seek to constrain innovation, uh, usually when they're proprietary, yes, when they're open, not necessarily. But uh, since everything these days with cloud services that we'll get into is really exposed or starting to be exposed via APIs, the notion that um, those are open are very important. Uh, portability, ultimately, open standards and APIs yield interoperability, but portability between cloud providers is very important to, to, to folks. The evolution of namespaces and registries, how we uh, advertise service availability and then ultimately choose to be able to consume them uh, uh, because ultimately as these services get very distributed, we, we have to understand what's available. We've been struggling with this for, for years, right? We see things like UDDI uh, in web services being able to tell, oh, here's all my services. You can pick and choose to consume them. We need something very similar to that. Uh, transparency through both introspection and retrospection for things like forensics is very, very important. Uh, identity and authentication, strangely enough, the um, last 40 years have shown us that, and uh, Vince Cerf uh, in discussions when he was asked what he would do differently in rebuilding IP, if he knew what he knew then, what he knows now, would be I'd, I'd put more authentication back in, or I'd add authentication back in. A huge problem in public cloud environments when you're trying to federate access to multiple applications and content. Uh, mobility and transitivity, the network really has to change and change how and why and uh, the manner in which it does what it does. Um, as we'll get into uh, as the presentation uh, proceeds, you know, this notion of um, abstraction really, really puts uh, stresses upon how we manage and secure our information and application and the network, um, which is supposed to, it, it, by one definition, be dumb and, and kind of uh, just a conduit, really stops providing functionality in ways that make it easy to consume and deliver these applications if it's not aware of the traffic flowing over it, and vice versa, or at least the workloads themselves. Um, so the, the network itself becomes uh, strangely uh, more or less important depending on your perspective. Uh, to a provider, it certainly does. Uh, we, If ever there was a... a um, an issue that highlights the need for SDLC and, and, and does not make application or web application security uh, go away. This would be it, since most of these clouds are exposed uh, now, um, you know, almost exclusively uh, via, via the internet and in public clouds. 
So it really is a pushback to information centricity and survivability, meaning focusing on the data and making these systems survivable.